Dan McEwen with the Great Plains Institute, and I direct the Metro Region of the Clean Energy Resource Team, or CERT. And one of um, the duties that I have is to um, work on the workshop series each year. That started off a few years ago with one workshop, and then three, and then now we do eight. We do one <laughs> one a month, kind of in that school year period. Um, so official kickoff of the 2015-2016 workshop series for Green Tech we're grateful to be here and um, thank our sponsor, McKnight Foundation, and uh, provides the funds so that we can do this to um, really get information um, out to folks about the uh, participants that we have, um, answer questions, and make sure people are able to move along in the steps of the Green Steps Cities program. So thank you for being here. Today is really going to focus on the basics, best practices of getting started. So for cities especially that are new to the program or are considering um, to understand the process and what to do. And um, so we'll have a probably a little bit abbreviated workshop. Normally we do about two hours, but this won't take that long. Um, we'll do the presentation and um, my colleagues in the room that help make put these workshops on are Pat, Patrick Mathwig with the Great Plains Institute running the webinar and answering your questions that you type in. And Philip Music, the co-director of the Green Step Cities program who is based at the Minnesota Pollution Control Agency. And I will let Philip take it over and run us through the workshop. Thanks. All right. uh, thank you, Diana. Welcome, everyone, in the room and on the uh, workshop. Uh, so here's a picture taken this year, I believe, this mm -hmm. year, up uh, at the June uh, 2015 League of Minnesota Cities Annual Conference uh, in Duluth. Uh, so the Green Subsidies uh, is a Partnership. It's a program run by a partnership of organizations. So we're going to switch to um, uh, some slides, maybe about there we go, about maybe 15 slides to cover the basics. But maybe what I'll I'll start with is just uh, ask if anyone has a like one key sort of like burning question. Is there any one key thing you need to know? Like I don't understand. Da, da, da. Just check with that. Okay. If things come up. We'll just raise our hands in the room or yeah, of course that Okay, great, thanks. Okay, so as I say, we're um, our normal um, uh, workshop with, which deals with content areas like land use, energy, transportation, uh, buildings um, run two hours, but this one's gonna be uh, nine to ten o'clock. Um, covering the basics and um, Maybe the biggest takeaway is that on the website, when you go to the Green Set website, there's a contact um, below the green banner on the Green Set website. There's a, a little contact button, and um, if you press that, you can send a, an email to uh, myself or Abby Finnis, who works over at the Great Plains Institute. Um, and I will, however, whatever question, we can handle it and um, get you in touch with uh, people like Patrick and Diana. So, so Green Step Cities, it's, think of it as three programs in one. It's not a sort of unusual um, uh, sort of uh, program that uh, government entities over the years have um, created. Think of the Star City program, the old uh, Minnesota Star City program for economic development from the 80s. It was this three-part program, a challenge, at the very least a simple sort of checklist, sort of minimal things, um, challenging cities to take actions, um, and assistance program. So trying to focus in a way that I think general, uh, certainly state level programs sometimes don't, sometimes don't do as well as we could. Focusing the assistance materials to help you complete a challenge. And in Green Step, the challenge is, the challenge is to complete best practice actions, so specific actions. 170 in total, organized under 28 best practices. So that's the um, challenge assistance and then the recognition part of the program, uh, which we've asked cities on occasion, like how important is recognition? And depending on your city, being recognized at the state of Minnesota level and recognized by the League of Minnesota Cities as a green step cities is more important or less important. But we found as time has gone on, it is in fact more important. And so at that 2015 League of Minnesota Cities Conference, where we recognized cities, we had, I think we had probably 45 cities uh, out of our 86 now, Green Step Cities. Um, 
So uh, mmgreenstep.org Well, 
So why a program rule? And it's like, well, we all sort of gravitate to joining programs to sort of help us sort of keep on track, learning from others, being recognized. Again, for some cities, more important or less important, but we, that, that's important. And then choosing your own path at your own pace. So Green Step has um, a pathway where virtually all of the actions you, you have, uh, a city chooses which ones to work on. Recognition at the step three level, so I'll go into the recognition scheme uh, with a slide, but recognition at the step three level, there are a few sort of high priority actions that we have. We've looked at the evidence, we've talked to cities, and we have marked a few of those. For example, having a comprehensive plan uh, that's no more than 15 years old, that feels like just an essential sort of best uh, practice action for recognition at higher levels. But recognition at step two, total choice. And cities work at their own pace, and sometimes it takes two, three, four years to, for a city to, after joining, which is recognition at step one, after joining, it might take your city three, four years to reach step two or three, and, and that's fine. The program is there uh, for, for you. Um, a little more of the thinking behind Green Step Cities. We very much see this as a program that helps energize and give assistance to not just city staff and elected officials, but also key citizen leaders who can serve on city commissions and civic groups, for example, Chamber of Commerce members. Um, we feel that coordinated action, that community action is, is, is essential. Green Step is much more about actions as in taking specific sort of on the ground, uh, sort of uh, making, a, sort of accomplishing things as opposed to planning. So they're not, I mean, although I did just mention comprehensive planning as an action, action 6.1, um, but uh, mostly Green Step gives credit or challenges you to do things um, for example, install, install a roundabout a traffic calling uh, device, not, not to plan for how you might put one in. Um, the actions are uh, sort of four, I think of them in terms of, well, here I have three sort of categories. So cities adopt policies, which uh, direct future action, public and private. Um, cities spend money and time to do things, and then they work uh, in their role as uh, providing information, education, running programs, serving as a collaborator, convener. Um, we have uh, actions that are appropriate for small cities, big cities, cities in greater Minnesota. Um, we feel like you go, going on the Green Step Cities website, you can read what how other cities have accomplished specific actions, and we fear, feel that peer learning is really a excellent way to sort of feel more confident in taking actions if others in Minnesota have done that. We talk about the business case as in the sort of economic sort of sort of job sort of private sector vitality aspect of, um, of uh, best practices. We, we talk about that a lot because that's an essential part of our, of our city. Uh, here's the history which I talked about. So let's see, a few little sort of data points. So here's a map. Um, you can sort of see the outline of Minnesota there with all the green dots. Um, 85 cities actually in one uh, tribal nation, Leech Lake, um, have for several years been using the Green Step um, best, practice, best Practice Action Framework, and they really wanted to join. And, and although the program is not designed for counties or townships or Indian nations, um, uh, we felt like they wanted to join and it was useful, so they're a green set city, even though they're a separate nation. Um, a third of Minnesota's population resides in the green set cities. As I said, we can, small cities, I think our smallest is 360. Uh, largest would be St. Paul. Um, we've sort of done an, an urban and rural, we've done an sort of analysis of how do the uh, community members in cities that are green set cities, how do they sort of, how have they voted and presidential elections in the past to um, compared to the average Minnesota city and we have very much Green Sub cities are very much a reflection of the sort of uh, political variety of, of uh, Minnesota which we think is a really good thing and then the heart of Green Sub is this taking actions cities type into the website how they've completed an action so we have 2331 actions 
actions record on the website. Um, we've done two, really probably three surveys of cities since uh, 2010, and here are a few details. Um, again, a little, uh, a little bit of statistical analysis showed that in sort of on average, Queen's up the population uh, of community members in Queen's up cities are a little younger than average. Um, Though so I wouldn't claim a causative relationship, we saw lower unemployment in, I think this was March uh, 2011, when we analyzed sort of employment across all cities and across Green Sub Cities. We like to think of Green Sub Cities as leaders, as, as sort of uh, energetic, sort of vital cities, um, trying to do a better, you know, build a better quality of life for their residents. And it was nice to see this lower unemployment. Um, a third of, of the Energy Star buildings, uh, very efficient uh, commercial and public buildings in Minnesota are uh, marked as Energy Star buildings. Um, and in our surveys, we we heard cities talking about they're motivated in, to join Green Step cities. They're motivated to um, really dive into how how can we save more money, um, uh, the recognition from their peers, other cities, uh, energized by sort of comprehensive, sort of audacious goal of sustainability. Um, and cities are motivated and, and tend to have a, a staff culture that working with citizen commissions and really trying to as staff work across departmental boundaries, which sometimes um, is, is hard even in, even in smaller cities. So, okay, basic basics here. So in, on the Green Step Cities website, we have a tab that says uh, become a Green Step City. So on that tab, there's a question and answer um, uh, little button, big button on the right-hand side, um, breaking out of that uh, sort of a series of um, description of benefits of joining. There's an organizing guide, uh, really written for smaller cities who would who would join. You can download that. Um, there are testimonials, fact sheet. Um, a detail of those steps one, two, and three, the recognition steps, and then a sample resolution for joining. So um, in thinking about, and it says also on the front page, in thinking about becoming a Green Step Cities, building some type of community support. And every city is going to be different, so whether you have an existing uh, citizen commission or you have a, you know, um, the Isaac Walton League chapter. We never, we never quite know, but the variety um, of uh, sort of citizen, sort of non-city staff interest, we, we feel is, in, is important. So some, and in some cities, it's just one motivated person who's working with uh, city staff or city council to to say, let's challenge ourselves to record what we've done and, and do more. So building community support, um, identifying best practices that the city has done. So Green Step gives credit for gives credit for things your city has already done, and that seems very important. And we think of that as a, just doing a basic inventory. Before joining, uh, you can download an Excel a spreadsheet, and you can just go down the best practice actions and check off which ones you've done, or hmm, would it be nice to do this one, or oh, this is not relevant. I think that sort of quick inventory uh, is, is useful. Some city council, depending on your city council, some city councils want to they want to know that, oh, we're almost at step two, or, oh, we've done a lot, or, oh, we have so many things we haven't done. So depending on your city council, some sort of inventory can be useful to present uh, when um, uh, you present a, uh, or discuss a resolution to join the Green Sub City. And there's a sample resolution for joining. Uh, joining the elements of joining Green Sub Cities um, are passing a resolution that identifies a one key contact person. And if you have an entity or, that would become a Green Step Committee, it could be a staff green team, could be a um, Chamber of Commerce uh, Committee, could be a Main Street Committee, uh, could be a Minnesota Design Team uh, Committee following up from a, a planning shred. Uh, again, variety is, is endless, but we um, uh, in, encourage cities to think about a well, list a contact person, and then if there's an entity that would, again, be assisting the city council, and then after you join, typing into the Green Step website, documenting what, what you've done, and then working on new things, because we 
give credit for bold and new actions, as I say here. Um, so the key is obviously simple. Thinking about sort of ter sort of terminology you'll run into. We before before you join Green Sub City, we ask you to uh, answer eleven. I think it's eleven questions on a spreadsheet um, to place your city in a category. And the categories are category A, city, category B, city, category C. Um, the simplest way to think about this is category A cities are these sort of high capacity. They tend to have a larger population. And category C cities tend to be small, um, but not necessarily rural cities. We, we don't ask if you're sort of rural or urban. We don't ask your population because it's really a capacity issue. And the reason we categorize uh, cities is that the, the challenge for reaching step two, the recognition level, or step three, the challenge is harder for a category A city. So St. Paul, for example, is a green step city, and they're challenged to do more uh, to be recognized as step two, step three, whereas a city um, uh, like Milan, Minnesota, there we go, so Milan's about, I think, 365. You know, Milan is challenged to do less because they have a smaller capacity. So that's the city category. Um, best practices, as I said, Green Step is organized around best practices, 28 of them, um, organized into those categories that cities are um, commonly work under. So you think about your buildings, how those buildings are arranged. So you think about land use. How do people get around among the buildings? Transportation. Um, in, in living on the land, there are uh, effects like water effects, air quality effects that we have, environmental management best practices. And then what's the point of us being in cities that we, um, uh, we work, we have jobs, uh, we make improvements, we generate wealth, and so we have economic and community development best practices. So, so those 28 best practices, think of them as, as really sort of goals. So we have a goal of, for example, um, um, would be a good goal. Think about in transportation, um, sort of increasing mobility options. That's best practice number 12. So that's the, that's the best practice. And then under that best practice 12, increasing mobility options. How do we do that? We have a, a set of actions, no more than eight actions per best practice. Um, and in total, we have 170 best practices under the, uh, 170 actions under the best practices. As cities com complete and, as I say, enter onto the website how a city has uh, completed a, a best practice action, I get an email and I read that and I compare it to sort of guidance we have or, not, or sort of a star rating guidance that's organized into one, two, three stars, meaning, um, and it really helps the city and me understand, have you completed an action at a good level, which would be one star, uh, at a better level, that would be two stars, and then at the best level, three stars. So that action rating, that star rating um, system, it, it's not rigid. It, I really think of it as, as guidance, partly because as we learn from cities, as we read what other cities have done, we've modified and tweaked the guidance. So the Green Sub Cities program is, is very dynamic. It's, it's not a regulatory program, so we don't need to, it's not cast in stone. What When we uh, were doing the final work in early 2010, we knew that it would evolve as, as we learned from cities. So the action rating is the star rating. It's, it's guidance. It's not absolute. And the, so as, as we mark stars for actions on the website, as cities uh, enter those reports, we recognize cities at currently three levels, but they'll be two more. So step one is you join, send a, uh, a resolution uh, uh, to me. Step two is complete, depending on your city category, um, four best practices, that would be for a category C city, six for a category B city, or eight best practices for a category uh, A city. And completing a best practice, I was talking about mobility options, for some or let's take stormwater, since I know that. For stormwater, a, a city, I think any category city would complete one, one action. That sort of allows you to claim that best practice. Um, 
for or local food, for example, would be one action. For some best practices, for example, having buildings, your own buildings, um, the sort of criteria for claiming credit for that best practice is complete two actions, and often it's any any two actions. So that's so that's sort of as we're being rec as you're being recognized, we uh, and, I, and I send out several times a year to cities a little kind of tally sheet of how you're doing a little assessment sheet. Step three is complete basically twice uh, the best practices with a few sort of high priority ones, for example, um, having a comprehensive plan. Uh, in December or January, we will launch steps four and five, two new recognition levels, and sort of the final recognition levels for, for cities. And these will be reporting numbers. Um, uh, and, and then step five, uh, step four, and then step five will be showing an improvement in those numbers. So um, numbers would be, uh, would be things like um, sort of efficiency of water use in your city. So just sort of the asset test of as you complete actions, are those actions moving the numbers? Can we see improvement in numbers that um, uh, that are numbers that reflect sort of beneficial actions that your city is taking? So so that's the sort of total range scheme for for recognition green step um, steps four and five will be as I say out in December, January, and I think we're doing a workshop. I think January we're doing a workshop on step five. Um, okay, so the best practices, as I've said, 28 of them organized in these five categories. This is from the front page, and you click on a, a best practice, and you see the actions underneath each. But I think first I'll just pause um, and ask any any questions. Did I confuse you in any way? That Let's give you a chance to send anything. Okay, as I said, feel free to um, uh, jump on the um, chat function to, to ask any questions. Okay, anything from uh, Diana or Patrick? Or, okay. All right. So, um, so here's the um, the template for every best practice page. So. So you click on the, the name of a best practice here. We're looking at local food. And the best, the best practice is, is, think of it as a goal. So in this case, our goal is to strengthen local food and fiber production and access in your city. So that, that's the goal. And how do we work toward achieving that goal? We implement one or more best practice actions. In this case, it's pretty simple, uh, four actions. Um, the actions range from uh, adopting an ordinance, action number one, um, to really two, two, three, two, three, and four are more about um, programmatic actions, assistance that the city would take. So, for example, it's not, not uncommon for a city to uh, allow a private um, uh, farmer's market uh, organization uh, to use, uh, you know, the uh, parking lot of City Hall or um, uh, Parkside or or some space that maybe normally would be rented out. Um, so a city can assist that private sector action and then claim credit for that. Um, up in the upper right here, the yellow box is as for most of the best practices. This one's optional. So for any all categories of cities, um, if you choose to implement this best practice, um, complete one action. Very simple for this one. Um, the summary below that on the right hand side is sort of the, the argument for taking action. Again, something you might copy and, and paste to help sort of um, a city council or a, a commission or an entity sort of understand sort of why are we working on this action? What, what, sort of why does it matter? Um, for those who want to dig into the sort of the evidence base, um, every best practice page has a benefits here, lower left hand um, side has sort of a benefits, benefits, benefits section. Again, this I changed this as as we hear about 
better studies, uh, you know, clear explanation of the benefits of taking actions will change what's listed here. Um, and then for cities who perhaps have never sort of waded into this this area, um, we always encourage people to just give a call or send an email to the best practice advisor. So every best practice has a, um, a person from state government uh, or the university or a nonprofit organization. We can just call up and say, oh, I'm, you know, it's sort of, I'm this sort of sitting, we've done this, but really how would we do this? And is there somebody who helps fund that? Um, this would be, uh, so for example, Peter here um, uh, uh, in the audience um, is a best practice advisor for public sector buildings, best practice number one. And you can call Peter to understand, you know, what are ways I can work with um, and access private capital to, to um, energy savings projects where there's a guaranteed um, energy saving um, and I can work through it. You know, sort of vetted organizations and, and private uh, entities who help me actually do things in my building. So, so that's why you would call a best practice advisor. When we click on click on one of those actions, and here we're jumping to another best practice. This is the Living Streets or Complete Complete Streets um, best practice number eleven. When we click on a, an action, we get this what I call a tab view. Uh, so the tabs view starts out with what we call implementation tools. So what what could I read or who could I contact? But it's usually what can I read? Um, a guidance manual, design specs, um, standards, model ordinances. Uh, what could I read that would help me um, actually accomplish this action? In this case, this is implement traffic calling measures. Um, so, for example, you know, one would very much want to go to MnDOT's resources on roundabouts. Um, so we hope to short circuit the, the first, I mean, we all have this frustration of Google, you know, you Google, it's like, I want to know something, and you Google, and you'll get, you know, you'll get what's happening in New Zealand, in Chicago, New York, Los Angeles. It's like, you don't, you don't want to read about what, how Los Angeles implemented traffic calling and implement a roundabout, you want to read MnDOT's specs and details. So, so these resources also change as we learn um, from cities and as we hear about improvements. The, uh, the next tab is this star rating guidance, and this is really completion guidance. So how would I know, how would I know that I've implemented a traffic calming measure at a good level, one star, a better level, two star, or a, a best level? Uh, three star. Again, this guidance modifies and, and changes as we, uh, for example, what would be a good example? Uh, LED street lights. Five years ago, LED street lights were, oh, that's kind of a hard, that's kind of like a three, two, three star. You know, nowadays, you don't need to research, you don't need to analyze the benefits of putting in an LED street light. You just need to find a way to get it done. And so we give you probably maybe only two stars. Other than, I can't quite remember. But anyway, so there's slight calibration, recalibration um, uh, to keep, you know, sort of to up our game to make sure you're taking actions that, that really are uh, sort of adding sort of benefit to your city, sort of uh, keeping on that innovation edge. So start that. And then uh, who, who's doing it, which I think is increasingly just the most interesting part of the, the website. These are um, stories from cities that have accomplished something you might want to do. So we really encourage you to uh, skim down, uh, read about how cities have accomplished something you want to do. And, and then each um, who's doing a report has someone to contact as a, as a staff person. Here's the city input page. So when a city joins Green Step City, we give you uh, an a private password protected administrative page where you type in your action report. So here's a screenshot of the, uh, of the uh, page where you type in how you've completed an action. Um, so you can see that rating guideline, that one star, two star, three star, under the red text at the, at the top. Um, in this case, um, you can see that I read this uh, Austin. 
City of Austin um, action entry page for action 21.6, which is um, a septic uh, action. Um, and it was completed at one star level, so I assigned it. You see the, the, the one star on the website, and then a city can see that it's been assigned this. Um, contact me if it's like, oh no, I, I completed this at a two star level. I, I think you're wrong. You know, we're very fluid here. We want to sort of um, hear from cities, and so if we made it, what looks like a mistake, you know, these things are not cast in stone. But so here's the page, and you can see um, the action was. Oh, yeah, the action was completed um, in 2012. The city came back in 2015 and made an addition. Uh, you can upload a file, a PDF, like a web link that would tell more about how you completed the action. Implementation detail often is three sentences, four sentences. It's not, you know, we're not looking for an exhaustive treatise on how you did it. We really just want the snapshot. That's all you want to read when you're looking at how other cities have completed an action to, and for you to learn. We don't want you to wade through long, long text. So just the sort of the, the essentials. If you have any sort of metrics, outcome measures. So for example, for a you know for a think about a roundabout. You know if you if if you uh, completed putting in a roundabout and you realize wow this cost us you know twenty thousand less than a signalized intersection. We'd love to have some specifics of numbers. Um, we even got for one city, uh, this was I think the city of Northfield, um, which introduced uh, police officers on bicycles. Uh, the metric was one of our police officers lost, I think it was 20, 20 or 30 pounds. <laughs> but yeah, details, you know, this is, yeah, we love the metrics, you know, we love the metrics. So give me pounds, <laughs> give me money, we love money too. Um, uh, but you don't have to do that. Partners, if you worked with a consultant, if you worked with a nonprofit entity, let us know. Work with a church, um, let us know that. Um, you can uncheck the make it public box. So you can enter actions and keep it as a draft. So perhaps you have a college student home for the summer who is helping you type into these, these actions. Um, or the city of Roseville has a retired engineer who's typing in these actions. You know, she's keeping them all sort of private as a draft, shows them to the city manager, and then you go back. And although at this point it's sort of tedious, you have to go into each action to make it public when you're ready to make it public. But that's one of those little web things we slowly improve the website. But anyway, an act uh, that, that um, possibility of keeping things in a draft form. And then who's the action contact? Who would another city contact if they wanted to implement it? So that's the, uh, or maybe when we're here um, at this city administrative page. Uh, so up at the top under the, the green set, the green, green set banner, uh, these are the um, separate pages that cities have access to. So the participant city is who's your city contact starts off with the uh, city contact identified in the uh, Green Sub Cities Resolution, you select a best practice, which one are you going to report on? You click, so Austin clicked best practice 21 and then clicked save. And then you click report actions, and then all the eight actions, eight action options under that best practice 21, all eight show up. And then um, uh, the city clicked on number six and then made this entry and saved it. Uh, view documents. This is kind of this is the um, uh, premium. Con we'll call it premium content. So there are samples of um, a press release um, information for when you join. Um, there are uh, uh, sort of community reporting documents. For example, Pine River. I think I'll show you has a really cool way of uh, communicating to their public uh, best practice actions completed, working on, um, and wanting to work on. So that's the uh, few documents. That's premium content. Uh, contact info is contact info for um, specific best practice actions. You can change that. Although we, we're having a little, there are some, there are some little glitches with that. But for right now, I think it's working fine. Um, change password. I'll give you a password. It's not very creative. You can change that. Up. And then logging off, obviously. As I said, here's um, under the uh, 
the documents section of your administrative website, you have access to really some interesting um, standout uh, accomplishments. Uh, here, Pine River, north of, uh, north of Brainerd, 950 people had a community meeting where probably 250 people showed up and um, one of the people working on Green Step uh, was actually a Green Corps member of Minnesota. Green Corps is a, a program run out of the Pollution Control Agency where I work and they had a Green Corps member working on local foods, I think, specifically. Um, but he he worked with a um, uh, sort of a business, uh, sort of a business incubator, sort of innovation um, project up there, and they came up with this nice little graphic that they showed to people. Um, here are a few, and then just I'll end here with a few other examples of other cities. Uh, here's Marshall, obviously a larger uh, city. Um, it has a, a, a public page uh, that talks about their Green Step Cities work, and they've created a Green Step business sort of a um, unique to Marshall, a, a challenge program for, and, and recognition program for uh, businesses uh, doing more environmentally beneficial taking actions, which they call Green Step uh, Business. Uh, here's, is this Bemidji? Yeah, so this is Bemidji. Uh, Bemidji has worked very closely with their educational institution, Bemidji State University, um, who has supplied, yes, supplied their um, Green Step coordinator, um, who now reports to the city council every, I think every quarter. So here's an example of a, of a city very much um, relying on the efforts and the time and the labor and expertise of someone who is not a city staff person. And so the, the, but the city council wants to sort of you know, keep in touch and give feedback and sort of help set the agenda for what's those new actions that the city is doing and the, the help that the Bemidji State uh, person is providing. So, um, so they want to have, so they have a nice website here reporting their uh, Bemidji Green Step work. And then a little uh, We're Green Step City button, that's a downloadable um, a graphic uh, on your admin site, admin page. Uh, here's another little We're a Green Step City, so this is uh, Shorewood. Shorewood, a fairly sm small um, western uh, uh, Twin Cities uh, city, which I think is the first city to, yeah, first city council resolution um, uh, really promoting uh, be friendly plantings, policies, uh, city actions, and encouraging um, uh, private gardening actions to um, increase uh, honeybees. So that's uh, Sherwood. So that's all the that's all the slides. It's what ten to ten. Uh, those are all the slides and uh, what seemed like um, basic things to present. Um, but I will ask as we bicycle into the future here. Um, questions? Any clarifying uh, comments? Um, There's none on the webinar, but if anyone has any, you can type them in now and I'll ask them for you. Um, but I guess I have one. You mentioned Bemidji worked closely with Bemidji State to help complete actions and, and do work on the program. Can you mention other resources that communities commonly leverage to help do initial inventory, enter best practices, or, or do best practices? No, I think no. That's a, a great question because I think um, myself, Patrick, Diana, I think what we hear fairly commonly from a city that wants to join or has joined, and this can even be a larger city, larger city um, like uh, Ridgeville, cities will say, "Oh, it's kind of a little bit of work to." Type in, think back, and figure out who to list as a contact. That that's not a. I mean, I can appreciate it's not an insignificant task to go into the website and type in how you've completed these best practices. Uh, so what we encourage is, what we certainly remind cities, you proceed at your own pace. You don't have to do it. Um, I mean, some cities just jump jump you know right on and and have a staff person who has time, but yeah, we encourage cities to look at those community members um, who are interested in um, sort of working on quality of life improvements, sustainable 
improvements in the city and see if there's someone who's not a city staff person who can help. So, yeah, as I say, so sometimes it can be a, a, a college student home for break, um, Minnesota Green Corps program, that's a sort of a minor activity that a, a full-time 11-month uh, AmeriCorps funded person can do. So you can apply each, each spring for a Green Corps person. Um, uh, we think sometimes, uh, what would be an example? Uh, well, Pine River, I said I think it was Hunt Utilities Group, um, Happy Dancing Turtle, their nonprofit. Uh, one of their staff people is is the uh, Green Step Coordinator, um, checks in with the City Council periodically, but that person is doing the, the typing in. Um, retired engineer for Richfield, as I said. Um, so, yeah, don't feel like you, it has to be a, a city staff person. Uh, I, I think, uh, or intern working um, up in the uh, in, uh, North Shore area, several cities like uh, Grand Marais, uh, Two Harbors, Silver Bay. I had a 12-month student who was working on a work study. It was a work study or maybe it was an internship program. So that's how those cities got their inventory uh, entered. And we have a question from Delray William. Um, have other cities partnered with local colleges? Moorhead has two colleges with sustainability efforts. Um, yeah, Bemidji is a, a great example. Uh, they're close partnerships. I'm uh, uh, Crookston. Yeah, Crookston. Um, they have a Center for Sustainable Communities. I think that's what it's called. Um, and and so that would be a, a close a close partnership. Um, in the metro, I can't think of a metro. Marshall, Marshall. I think Marshall has some. You know, depending on the city, there's there's been some contact, um, some collaboration. But those the ones I mentioned are the ones that jumped to, uh, jumped to mind. And I think it's a wonderful. I mean, developing ideally an ongoing every year association with a could be a technical community college, whereby you get a, an intern or work study student to help a city t take a specific action or just do this entering on the website. I think it's a fantastic idea. I think we frankly underutilize the energy and sort of creativity and speed of, of young people um, in our educational institutions. So I would totally rely on them. Seek them out. Anything, anything else? I would, I would say, partly in closing, that Green Sub Cities, you know, as a challenge assistance recognition program, just like the Star City program for economic development, you know, I don't think we, we won't need to be around forever. It's, it's, um, I mean, the Star City program found in late, in the late 1970s that there were a few cities that had a organized, um, ongoing program to retain and expand existing businesses and attract other businesses. And so the Star City program has four simple actions to, um, to sort of up the economic development game in cities. And after, I don't know, if it was probably it was probably 15 years. After 15 years, Star City program, you still see the signs out there. There are about 220 star cities. But after about 15 years, it's sort of like most everyone recognizes the the importance of supporting local businesses, attracting new ones, uh, retaining uh, existing ones. Um, our aim in the Green Sub Cities is to be the same, is to sort of work ourselves out of business because we, you know, our really our vision is to make sustainability that thinking about the economic, social, uh, quality of life benefits of taking an action. We, we want to make um, sustainability the, the norm. This, should just become the way we do business. So we we feel like we will get in our cities in Minnesota, we'll get to the point where thinking about energy, for example, or thinking about clean water is just part and parcel of every anything, everything we do. Um, because for cities with limited staff time, limited money, we, we want to take an action that has multiple benefits. So we've we've really worked hard and we continue to work hard to refine the actions in Green Steps such that 
in taking an action, there are multiple benefits. It's not just one narrow little benefit, but public and private benefits um, that strengthen your city. So that's that's sort of the really the, the big picture. But I but I think again, I think I think Governor Carlson really sort of hit it right. Is that ultimately doing doing the best thing for uh, the sort of economics in our city is is going to be the best thing for our environment. And, and vice versa, and the, and the challenge is to sort of tunnel through the hassle factor, the sort of what look like cost barriers, sort of sort of tunnel through and find those ways that and energy efficiency is your classic example where it's sort of more work to make a, a building, for example, more energy efficient. It's more work, you end up saving money and you save money every year, and it, there's lots of efficiency work and serves as a uh, key green city partner, you know, is there to help help you, regardless of your city size, help you walk in cost savings in your your buildings, and then work with your private businesses um, um, to save money year in year out. So, Diane, I have a question. Yeah. So, so, as a person who works on this program, the question I think I get most is, where do I start? What do I do? Like what's your, what is the advice when somebody, you know, some state calls and says, so we think we're interested in that green thing that you guys are doing, how do I go about that? I think identifying someone in city government, so it could be mayor, or city council, city staff, that, that's the must do because it is, this is a program for cities and in order to join there needs to be that Green Step resolution to join, passed by the city council. So I'd say absolutely number one is who in city government, and depending on um, uh, depending on the size of the of the city, it could just be one person. Could be like in Northfield, I'm thinking it was uh, one of the city council members. Um, in Royalton, it was the it was the mayor. So I, I think that's essential. Identify who in, in city government. Number two. However, is, uh, uh, I think very you know, next in importance is who outside of city government, but working with city government, who who else is interested in this framework, this pathway, this checklist, this this challenge program to um, sort of accelerate our sustainable sustainability actions. So identify again, it could be a Isaac Walton League member. Um, could be Ducks Unlimited, could be a Chamber of Commerce member, could be a um, Council of Churches, local Council of Churches member, could just be a motivated citizen, maybe a former uh, former council member. Um, I, ideally, that person maybe is also on a city commission or has volunteered, so knows people in city government. So that would be the second thing. So, so you have the official city person, You've got someone um, uh, who's out there just thinking about sort of improving quality of life in, in the city. Um, th those, yeah, maybe I'd leave it with that. But you may be, Diana, what would you add? So what if, um, as a staff person, I didn't feel super comfortable explaining and answering questions about this program. Is there a chance that somebody from the program would come out and answer questions or do a presentation? Uh, right. Totally. How how can I pick it? Who might that be? <laughs> well, we are just fortunate to have in, in Greater Minnesota we have um, regional uh, clean energy resource team staff people, and in the metro we have Donna McEwen working with Patrick, uh, working with Peter here. So um, so we in in the metro um, contact. Diana, um, or contact me, and I'll send you to Diana. Oh, so yes, we do have a person who would come out, and maybe you want to first. Maybe it's just a discussion between, for example, Diana and a staff person. Maybe it's a presentation before a natural resource commission, or maybe it's go right to the city council. So whatever works for you, Diana would work, um, or a Greater Minnesota one of those sorts of staff people would work with. Um, I do a few of these, but I think you guys are. More active out there, so yes, I would say when in doubt, pick up the phone, send an email, and yeah, um, have someone come out because, right, we can answer all those fine little questions, and you know sometimes those questions are, you know, is Green Step associated with some national, international thingy, and it's like no, this is. Crazy.
created by Minnesota cities, for Minnesota cities. Um, do we have to do things? Are there requirements? Fundamentally, no. This is a structure for you to challenge and accomplish yourself. Uh, so it's not a you're not locking yourself into requirements. Can you leave the program? You can actually leave the program. Uh, we don't want you to do that because we think the evidence is there that it's a good program um, to belong to. But um, let's see what else. So there's no legal. You you sign a, a, a city council resolution. You are not entering into a legal uh, uh, agreement with the Pollution Control Agency or the Lake of the Cities or the Green City Partnership. Um, but there, sometimes those questions come up that you you might have a hard time if you're a city staff person presenting uh, to your council. Could be handy to have us, so we're always happy to be out there. So it's five after ten. Last last call for questions. Obviously, just click go to the website, click contact, uh, send in any questions uh, as they come up over the days. Uh, beyond this, but. I would, say, I would say with that, um, really appreciate everyone joining today. Um, beautiful, feels like first day of fall. Yeah. Any last words, Patrick? Um, just that there'll be, when you exit the webinar, there'll be a short survey. So if you could fill that out, um, that would be great. And also, you'll see on your screen, the next workshop is October, October 13th? Yeah, yeah 13th. Um, energy management planning, so we're talking about benchmarking and other energy management tools. Um, we'll be partnering with the U.S. Green Building Council, so they will be helping with that. Um, yeah, and I'll be sending you an email with links to this presentation and the webinar recordings that you can watch it or send it around to others. Um, so yeah.